In the last discussion, we looked at what velocity was. And velocity had an equation. Average velocity is displacement change in x over time. Well, if we've got a graph of position versus time, we can find the velocity from that graph. So let's take this one right here. I'm just going to do something like that. Oh, that was terrible. I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to do it with a line. Something like that, okay? And uh, let's give these guys some numbers. Let's call this 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 seconds, and 5, 10, 15, 20, negative 5, negative 10, okay? So just looking at this, remember we mentioned that the slope of x indicated how fast it's going, right? If it's steeper, it's covering more distance in a smaller amount of time. If it's flat, it's not moving at all. The x isn't changing at all. So if we look at this, it's a constant velocity. The average velocity is constant. The average velocity doesn't go up and, or down, but that average velocity will be delta x over t. And that's the same as just saying it's the slope of that line. Okay, so for a straight line, it looks like that. So the delta x would be positive 20. Okay, final uh, rise is 10 minus negative 10 is 20. And the run is 12. Okay, so that ends up being 10 over 6. Ugh. Okay, 1.6 bar meters per second because this is meters, this is seconds. So if we had, if this is 1 and this is 2, this would be a constant velocity. It would look something like that over those 12 seconds. 3, 12, there we go. Uh, Got to get rid of that stuff. Okay? So, straight line here means a constant slope, means a constant velocity. That means the value of the velocity is constant. Another way of looking at it is this. Let's take the slope of that chunk. Okay, well, you could get two points and calculate it. It would be 1.6 bar. Let's look at the slope of that. Let's look at the slope of that, the slope of that. Any section in there has a slope of 1.66, so it's clear that this is going to be constant. Uh, similarly, if we undo almost everything, and we take this, and we say here, right there, the slope is zero. So the velocity the entire time is zero. I can't draw it right on the line, but you get the idea. Okay, let's look at um, something where we've got more parts. Let's do, whoop, undo. Um, let's look at a situation where we've got this. Let's say there, and then from there, Let's go down to, um, I'm just going to do something like that, okay? Now, we know looking at that first section right in here, the slope, rise over run, is going to be 10 divided by 4 is 2.5 meters per second for that entire time. Then we know this slope is negative, okay, the rise, this is negative 10 up to, uh, from tw it goes from 20 to negative 10, the rise is negative 30, let me actually write it, meters, in 2, 4, 5 seconds, okay, started at 4 seconds, ends at 9 seconds, so that's negative 6 meters per second. So if we have, this is 2, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, it's going to be two and a half meters per second velocity. I didn't draw that well. That's supposed to be there's two down there. Okay, for the first four seconds. And then it immediately switches to negative six for the next five seconds. And I don't have my labels on here, but there's nine seconds. Um, I really don't care what you do at that transition, some people put a dotted line. In real life, the velocity can't go immediately from two to negative six. It just can't happen. It's got to slow down, stop. So in real life, 
if we look, there'd be a curve. This would not be a vertical line. It would have uh, some, uh, some slope to it, very steep slope. Things don't just suddenly switch speeds. They have to transition. Um, so I'm just going to say this is this line here, not vertical, not infinite slope. And we'll talk about what that would mean when we get to acceleration. It's not infinite slope. If you draw it that way, I don't have a big problem if you draw it as, as infinite. Okay, now let's take a look at things switching a little more continually. Okay, and I'm going to undo a lot of stuff here. And um, let's get rid of those two lines. Let me make it a curve. Delete that. And let's delete that. Come on. Delete. Oh, undo that. Okay, let me just get that out of the way. Okay, let's move that down there. I don't like my skills right now. Okay, let's have a look at this. That's a continual change. You're going to see an awful lot of that because position versus time. Curve means acceleration, speeding up, slowing down. Um, and if we then take a look at this, we've got a whole bunch of slopes, an infinite number of slopes. If you use this equation, whoops, if you use this equation here, average velocity is displacement over time, it's not going to work that well for you. Because look, if you do average velocity is displacement is 20, over 12, that's still 1.6 bar meters per second. But there's a problem, which is at the beginning it's going slower. If you had a straight line that looked like this and we did earlier, that would be a velocity of 1.6 meters per second. But you can see that earlier on, like in this area, the slope is not as high as 1.6 bar. Here the slope is higher. This is a situation where something starts slow and speeds up, speeds up, speeds up, speeds up. Okay, So this average velocity is, a, is really misleading. It doesn't tell a whole lot of the story here. It doesn't tell what's going on in the middle. So really to get a graph of this, we need to do a little more work. And the way we do that work is by saying, what's the tangent? to this curve and what's the slope there what's the tangent tangent and what's the slope there so if we do the slope at each of these points at any given point we can figure out what the velocity is I'm not going to go through that because I don't have enough detail this isn't a big enough graph but what will happen is at the very beginning if I drew it correctly the slope would be just about zero at the very beginning I tended to make it, I intended to make it flat at the very end, I'm going to do a little trick here, but here's one, two, three, four meters per second. At the very end, it's going to end up being, at 12 seconds, it's going to end up being, oops, I didn't draw it right, 3.3 .3 bar meters per second. How do I know that? I'll, sh I'll tell you in a minute. If we have a constant acceleration, which in intensified physics and in AP Physics 1, it's always a constant acceleration. That means the velocity graph will always be piecewise linear in this class. Not in everything that happens in the world, but in this class, piecewise linear. Well, it turns out that the average velocity, 1.6 bar, is the average of the two endpoints. So it's really just uh, V0 plus fi V final divided by 2 is also equal to V average. It's not always going to be this way. But if you have a linear velocity graph, it's the average of the two points. So the average of 3.33 and 0 is 1.66. All I did was I took 1.66 times 2 and added 0 to it. I'm sorry, I've got that wrong. That's V0 plus V. I'm screwing up there. So here's V average. Whoops. 1.6 bar. Okay. During the first half, it's going slower than 1.6. Then it passes that average. Then it's going faster than 1.6 bar. Okay. So this is how we look at position 
and uh, time graphs and velocity versus time graphs. That's how we go from here to there. Okay, and in the next video I'm going to talk about how we go from here to here, how we go back in the other direction.